This week's math lesson is an introduction to our new unit for the fourth marking period. We're going to begin to study geometry. Geometry looks at measurements and shapes. Geo has to do with shapes, and metry should sound like metrics, which means measurement. We're going to begin with a topic that hopefully you find somewhat easy, and we're going to start to talk about two- and three-dimensional shapes. The first type of shape we're going to look at are two-dimensional shapes. These are shapes that are completely flat. Um, if you were to draw them on a whiteboard or a sheet of paper, you would see them as is. There's no depth to them. There are two important vocabulary words that we should know. A vertex is singular, and it means one corner. If you have more than one vertex, we would pronounce that as vertices. So this triangle has one, two, three vertices. They form angles. The triangle also has sides. It has three sides. And this is where your line segment connects to another line segment. The types of shapes that we're going to look at when we talk about two-dimensional are defined by the number of sides and angles that they possess. When we talk about the word dimension, in your shop in particular, it's important to know that that word equals measurement. And these shapes that we're going to be looking at, we're only going to be talking about two types of measurements for them when we talk about the sides. Mostly we're going to be talking about length and width. Sometimes you'll hear people refer to it as height and base. Um, it depends on which type of shape we're looking at. For example, if we were going to talk about this triangle and we were going to calculate its area, we would really refer to the bottom as the base, and then we would be looking right here to talk about the height. In other types of shapes, like rectangles or squares, we would be talking about the length and the width. So when we want to talk about common two-dimensional shapes, we see here that you have three sides and three angles make up your triangle. Four sides and four angles is a very broad way to describe a shape. So anything that has four sides and four angles is really known as a quadrilateral. We're going to get into specific types of quadrilaterals in just a moment. Five sides and five angles is a pentagon. Six sides and six angles is a hexagon. These are all polygons. So a shape with three or more straight sides and angles is known as a polygon. A polygon can never have any type of rounded side or surface. This is why you won't see circles at all in this unit. The other thing to know is that when we're talking about the names of our two-dimensional shapes, prefixes, or the beginning of the words, are very important. We look at triangle. T-R-I, tri, means three. You probably know words like tricycle or triceps. Those are other objects that have three parts. Quadrilateral, any of you out there that have a quad, you know it has four wheels. Pentagon, P-E-N-T is five. Um, probably the most common thing you've heard of is a pentagram, which is like a five-pointed star. Hexagon is easy to remember because the X is for six, okay? So it's the only one that has an X in it, and six is a number that has an X. I don't have pictures of these other shapes. However, a heptagon or septagon has seven sides. Um, it depends on who you're talking to. People use both of these prefixes. One is Greek and one is Latin. That's the only difference there. Eight is oct, like octopus has eight tentacles. Nine is non. We would call it a nonagon if the polygon had nine sides. And 10 is deca. We would say decagon. And you might know words like decade, a period of 10 years. Now, I said I would get into types of quadrilaterals. You know many of these. Some of them are more specific than others. So a parallelogram is a four-sided shape. And the only thing other than having four sides is that there are two pairs of parallels. So I have the top and the bottom, which are parallel to one another. And then I have these sides, my left and right, which are parallel to one another. 
Moving on, my rectangle has more rules. It has two pairs of parallel sides, so my top and bottom are parallel, my left and right are parallel. But now when I look at my angles, each corner or each vertex must form a 90 degree angle. That rule didn't exist in the parallelogram. And if you look at the vertex, these are not 90 degrees. You have two acute and two obtuse. Moving along to the rhombus, you have two pairs of parallel sides and then the measurements of each side must be equal to one another. So in your rhombus, you have your top and your bottom that are parallel. You have your left and your right that are parallel and all four have the same measurement. So if this was three inches, this would be three inches. This would be three inches and this would be three inches. The square is the most specific of all the quadrilaterals. It has all these rules we've talked about so far. Two, parallels, two pairs of parallel sides, four right angles, and four equal sides. So you can start with process of elimination. If you have to figure out if something counts as a true square, you can start by asking yourself, okay, are there two pairs of parallel sides? Most quadrilaterals do have that. If it didn't, you would automatically know it was a trapezoid. The only rule that goes with trapezoids is that there's one pair of parallel sides. So your top and your bottom are parallel. But if you look at your left and right, if these lines were to continue, they would intersect at some point. So they cannot count as parallel. So let's move on. And let's talk about two-dimensional shapes versus three-dimensional shapes. That's what 2D and 3D stand for. 2D is two dimensions, 3D is three dimensions, three types of measurements. Here you see that you start off with what looks to be a square, and it has a height and it has a length. Then, once we have another dimension, we still have the length, we still have the height, but now we're talking about the width. Many times people will call this the depth. All right, so a test that sometimes people will use if they're not really sure which type of shape it is, is they have to imagine if they covered the shape with a blanket. So if I had this square and I put it on a table and then I laid a blanket on top, you wouldn't even know the square was underneath. The blanket would just lay right on top of it. But if I had a cube, I placed that cube on the table and then I put a blanket over that, you would see the bump in the blanket. It would not lay flat. So anything that would cause a bump under the blanket is 3D. There are the same vocabulary terms, but then there's one extra. So um, faces can be very similar to sides when we're thinking about that. Um, if I look here, this face, many people will use the word side. So that's why I said there's some of the same, but some different. We still have vertex or vertices. Faces are the flat surfaces of our three-dimensional figures. And then we have a new word, the edge. An edge is where one face meets another. So you have your top face and you have your right side face where they meet is an edge. Sometimes you will get people who will be very, very particular with their terminology depending on your homeschool math teacher. So that's why it's important to know that face and side can be used interchangeably, but sometimes they're not. So face is for this flat surface. Side is really measuring this line segment right here, the top of this squared face. When we talk about three-dimensional figures or shapes, the definition of a vertex can also change slightly. So here I have a cone. The point where the face meets here, the end of a cone, can be known as a vertex. This point here, where the faces of the pyramid meet, can also be known as a vertex. Sometimes there's another word for that. Sometimes we use the word apex. For our purposes in our lesson, you just need to know that those are vertices, okay? And here are some other types of common three-dimensional shapes. Cube, rectangular prism, cylinder, and sphere. A sphere 
only has one continuous curved surface. It has no edges and no vertices. A sphere is a little bit of an outlier when we talk about our measurements and the ways we would do certain types of formulas. So a sphere is similar to a circle in which it really doesn't apply to most of the rules that we use for 2D, 2D and 3D shapes. So now let's do some example questions. The first question says, which of these is an example of a quadrilateral? What do you think? When you were deciding what to answer, you should have started by counting the sides. So if I think about this, I say, okay, there's five sides here. If I go to my next shape and I count, there are six sides here. Then I go to my next shape. This is not even a polygon, okay? This rounded side here says it doesn't even count in this category. And then my last figure has four sides. Now, this is what we would call an irregular polygon because the sides are not equal, the angles are not equal. This would not be one of our quadrilaterals we've discussed already because there are no parallel sides. In fact, this would be called a kite in specific quadrilateral terms. So hopefully when you picked your answer, you said, oh, okay, it should be shape Z. And then hopefully you looked over here to pick letter Z. Hopefully you didn't get tripped up by the order there and you have to be careful. Sometimes people will pick D thinking, oh, it was the last one. But you really have to look at how the figures are labeled. Next question. This one you'll have to do a little bit with your imagination. It says drag each word and shape to the correct location on the chart. Not all shapes will be used. Okay, so that means when we're looking at our bank up here, not everything is going to be used. And it has another sentence we need to pay attention to. It says, Joni started to make this chart to sort shapes. Finish the chart with the names and pictures of the other shapes. So let's look at her first column because that's gonna tell us how she started. She has a title up here. It says shapes with four angles. So then she gave the proper shape name, which is quadrilateral. We know quadrilaterals have both four sides and four angles. Then she gave us two pictures, okay? Now, we're gonna go to our next category and it says shapes with five angles. What do you think that one should be called? Hopefully you said pentagon. And now we're gonna drag pictures of the shape down here. So that means that I need to find shapes that have five angles. So let's start first. I have one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. I'll go to my second shape. One, two, three, four, five, and there are more. All right, moving on. My third shape. One, two, three, four, five, still more, moving on. One, two, three, four, five, not back to where I started, nope. And my last shape, one, two, three, four, five, perfect. If it would move. There we go, all right, that one just didn't wanna move with its interior color. Next, it says shapes with six angles. So we know I already used pentagon, so I'm gonna have to put hexagon over here. What two shapes do you think will go in that part of the chart? Okay, so if we counted one, two, three, four, five, six, we know that this purple shape should go there. And if we did the same thing, one, two, three, four, five, six, we know that the orange shape, which doesn't want to move with its color, should go there. Let's look at the next question. All right, the directions say that we're gonna drag each tile to the correct box. Now, you might be saying, well, how, how do I know it's correct? Read the next sentence. It says, put the shape names in order. 
from least to greatest number of angles. So that means you're starting with the smallest one and then you're going to the largest one. So my choices are quadrilateral, hexagon, triangle, and pentagon. Go ahead, imagine what you think is the correct answer. Hopefully you knew that triangle had three, so that should go first. Then you know quadrilateral has four, pentagon has five, and hexagon has six. So this is three, four, five, six, from least to greatest. In this question, we want to know which of the pictures or figures or shapes above is a cube. So if I look at these shapes, we should know what they're called. This is a pyramid. This is a sphere. This is a cylinder. And this is a cube. Hopefully you paid attention to the fact that there's an X underneath the cube and you chose C, letter X. Last question. This one is a visual question. It's not a trick. Which of these objects has a shape like the globe above? Go ahead, what do you think? Hopefully you looked at each of these shapes and as you did so, you said, this rectangle looks absolutely nothing like this globe. The cylinder does not look like a globe. It looks like an aluminum can. The pyramid has a point which the globe does not. The sphere is what you should have picked. Even though this globe looks a little bit flat in the picture, um, you know that a real globe of the earth would be a sphere, it's just not a wonderful image. So hopefully you picked letter Y. If you need any help with this lesson, please feel free to contact me, email me, and we will work on it some more. Good luck and do your best.